Prophet Muhammad brought the light. Prophet Muhammad enlightened the sight. Prophet Muhammad brought the light. Prophet Muhammad enlightened the sight. May peace be upon him. May peace be upon him. Prophet Muhammad removed the dust. Removed the dust of unbelief. Prophet Muhammad brought us. Brought us a good relief. Prophet Muhammad brought the light. Prophet Muhammad enlightened the sight. May peace be upon him. May Alhamdulillah, all praise be to Allah, wa salatu wa salamu ala Rasulullah, and blessings and peace be on the Messenger of Allah. Dear brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah, and welcome back to another episode of this series, More Than Honey and Black Seed. Uh, last time we were talking about zina, beautification, and we said that uh, this time we may get into the talk about medicine. Uh, but before I talk about medicine, I will talk about some other form of medicine, which is sleep medicine. You know, there is a form of medicine that's called sleep medicine. You know, actually, there are specialists now. There are medical doctors who specialize in the area of sleep. So it is part of medicine. Actually, that's a specialty. And, and uh, those of you who, who uh, live in the West may know about this specialty. So what advice... What advice does the Prophet ﷺ give us in the area of sleep medicine, sleep guidance? Does the Prophet ﷺ leave this out of the guidance? No, certainly nothing is left out. Nothing that is of benefit of us, he didn't tell us of, and nothing that is of harm, he did not warn us against. So, what, what's, what did he say, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, with regard to the sleep medicine? There are several beautiful hadith. Uh, with regard to sleep, the Prophet ﷺ told us, as reported by Bukhari from Abi Barzat al-Aslami, that the Prophet ﷺ kana yastahibu an yuakhira al-isha wa kana yakrahu an-nawm qablaha wal haditha ba'daha. Kana yastahibu an yuakhira al-isha wa kana yakrahu an-nawm qablaha wal haditha ba'daha. Okay, the Prophet used to prefer deferring the Aisha prayer. And he used to dislike, dislike sleeping before Aisha and uh, staying after, talking, chit-chatting after Aisha. Uh, so sleeping before Aisha he disliked, chit-chatting after Aisha he disliked, hadith, talking after Aisha, but he liked to defer Aisha, Aisha uh, somewhat. The Prophet ﷺ liked to defer Aisha, but keep in mind he prayed with the Sahaba in congregation, so out of consideration for the Sahaba who used to go to work, uh, you know, and who used to be tired and used to be uh, sleepy if he deferred the Aisha, the Prophet used to pray Aisha uh, in the beginning of the time when he prayed it in uh, congregation for the Sahaba, and that you, was his usual habit. Uh, but, but keep that hadith in mind. Keep that hadith in mind because we will need to examine the beauty of this hadith uh, when we talk about the sleep cycle. And we will talk about the sleep cycle uh, shortly, inshallah. Now, the other hadith that we will need to remember when we talk about the sleep cycle is the hadith that is reported by Al-Bukhari and Muslim, so it's muttafaq alayhi, agreed upon from Abdullah ibn Amr ibn al-As in which the Prophet ﷺ praised the fasting and the night prayers of his brother, Prophet Dawood peace be on him. So the Prophet ﷺ said, Ahabu, and look at the, you know, the humbleness of the Prophet ﷺ, and look at the impartiality, recognition of the virtues of his uh, brother prophets. He said, Ahabu siyam, salati ilallah, salat Dawood, wa ahabu siyam, Allah, Siyam, Nabi Allah, Siyam, Nabi Allah, Dawood, Kana, Yanamu, Nisfa, Layli, Wayakumu, Thurusahu, Wayanamu, Sudusahu, Wakana, Yufti, Ruyama, Wayasumu, Yama, Kana, Yufti, Ruyama, Wayasumu, Nama. I want you to keep this in mind. So, one half, the first half of the night, he slept. Afterwards, he uh, rose to pray. 
that is after the first half of the night. So the next one third he rose to pray and he prayed. And then he went to sleep for the last one sixth of the night. Keep that in mind. Now, the last hadith that we wanted to, to, to keep in mind when we talk about the sleep cycle is a hadith that's reported by Tabarani from Anas ibn Malik, may Allah be pleased with him, in which the Prophet wasallam said, Qilu fa inna shayateen la taqil. Have a midday nap for the shayateen, the devils do not have a midday nap. Have a midday nap for the shayateen, do not have a midday nap. Now we've covered three hadith. There are more hadith about sleep, but that is sufficient for us for our purpose now. Having covered this, people, uh, you know, sane people recognize the importance of waking up early, waking up early. Rising early is a virtue, and wise people, and it is not a problem for us to, uh, to quote wise people that, uh, that are Muslim and that are non-Muslim. Uh, Benjamin Franklin, for instance, wrote a book on early rising. Wrote a book on early rising. Early rising is important. There have been studies that have been uh, cited by various uh, periodicals. If you look at this slide here uh, on the screen, you'll find a, a picture of the, you know, the Google form of the early rising book. Uh, uh, that was written by Benjamin Franklin. He said, early rising, a natural, social, and religious duty. Also, as the, uh, an article on WebMD by Sarah Yang uh, was reporting or was titled, Staying Up to Beat the Blues. Staying Up to Beat the Blues. Another uh, study that has been reported by WebMD uh, talked about the issue, Daniel uh, Denoon reported this for uh, WebMD, he's a WebMD reporter, and he reported that a study had shown that people may be sleeping a little too much, a little too much. Are you sleeping enough or too much? People may actually be sleeping a little too much. Those studies have shown that waking up early would be of benefit, that people may need to sleep a little bit less and a little bit less sleep, they said seven down to six hours may still be good for the human body. It varies between individuals, certainly. Biology is different from math. It's not exact science like math. Biology is not an exact science. Math is, but not biology. So things vary between one individual to the next, between one group to the next, and so on and so forth. But I want you to look at the screen now and look, examine the uh, sleep stages. That is the sleep cycle, uh, brothers and sisters. Look at this. Uh, you have here stage one, stage two, stage three, and stage four. And you have zero, one, two. That is how many hours after you go to bed. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now, do you still remember the hadith of Prophet Dawood alayhi salam or the hadith about Prophet Dawood alayhi salam in which the Prophet sallallahu alayhi salam said the best night prayer is the night prayer of Dawood alayhi salam. He used to uh, sleep half of the night, wake up one third of the night and then go back to sleep for one sixth of the night. Now, you remember the hadith. Take a look at this cycle. Take a look at the screen uh, to examine, you know, uh, the cycle of sleep. You will find that stage four, which is the deepest, you know, which is the darkest color here, that is the deepest sleep, the, the deepest sleep that rejuvenates your, uh, your, your, your tissues. Most of that takes place in which stage, in which part of the, in which part of your sleep, in which part of the night, in the first half, right? Absolutely. Most of stage four, even stage three, stage three and stage four are both called deep sleep. Stage one and stage two are light sleep. Stage three and stage four are deep sleep. You know, the colors go, as the colors go darker, that is your sleep getting deeper. The first half of the night is when you find most of the deep sleep that will be important for the rejuvenation of your tissues. 
Now, REM sleep, which is the rapid eye movement sleep, you will find some spikes that will say REM, R-E-M. REM sleep is rapid eye movement sleep. That is good for your memory, and that's good for certain me mental functions. And you will find that uh, a study have sh had shown that REM sleep, there is some important REM sleep that you want to be catching at the end of the night. That is why, and he went back to sleep for one-sixth of the night. At the end of the night, there is some REM sleep that uh, you won't be catching there. So the beginning, you have the deep sleep. You have some REM sleep that you won't be catching at the end of the night. In, in that one third that the Prophet ﷺ was talking about, where the wood used to rise for the, and, and pray and do the night prayers, it is as if your body is telling you you're supposed to be awake now. This is light sleep. You're not going to get much deep sleep now. You're supposed to be awake. So if you follow uh, this advi the advice, and if you sleep like Prophet Dawood alayhi salam ala nabi and may Allah uh, bless him and give him peace, peace as well as our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, then you will be able to, to reap the benefit of the deep sleep in the beginning of the night and the REM, rapid eye movement sleep, which is good for some mental functions at the end of uh, the night. So remember, one half sleep. And, and, and you know, that, that is not to mean that this is obligatory because some people may not be able to do it. If you're not able to do it, then we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us and you. Uh, but if you can afford to sleep the first half of the night and then wake up to pray and then go back to sleep, for one sixth of the night, then that would be the best kind of sleep you can do. The sleep of Dawood alayhi salam. And uh, when we come back after the break, we will be talking about the midday nap. Remember, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, as reported by At Tabarani from Anas radiallahu uh, anhu, said, "Qilu fa inna shayatina la taqil." Have a midday nap for. Asayatin, the devils do not have a midday nap. We will come back and examine the benefits of that uh, midday nap. So we'll see you back after the break, inshallah. God willing. Prophet Muhammad brought the light. Prophet Muhammad enlightened the sight. Prophet Muhammad brought the light. Prophet Muhammad enlightened the sight. covering the manners in Islam that a Muslim is supposed to have in Islam. There is a strong link between having good manners and piety. And then he said, I guarantee a dwelling in the highest rank of Jannah for the one who perfects his manner. That indeed, truthfulness leads to piety, to righteousness. And righteousness and piety leads to Jannah. Uh, the Prophet used to always uh, maintain family ties. Gentleness in Islam means to treat people with kindness and with tenderness. Prophet Muhammad brought the light Prophet Muhammad enlightened the sight. Prophet Muhammad brought the light. Alhamdulillah, welcome back. Before the break, we were talking about sleep cycle, you know, the various uh, parts of the sleep cycle. And we said that you have deep sleep and you have REM sleep and non-REM sleep and so on and so forth. Uh, you want to catch your deep sleep early in the first half of the night. You want to catch a little bit of the REM sleep that you need, you know, right before you rise. Uh, to Salat al-Fajr, and you can then do your night prayers between uh, those two phases. And we said that we will be talking after the break about Qaylula. Qaylula is very important, brothers and sisters, for those of us who can afford it, those of us who can't, Allah does not bear their souls beyond their capacity. It's not obligatory to have Qaylula, but if you can afford it, you know, make use of it, take the opportunity because that's an advice from the Prophet ﷺ. It doesn't get any more valuable than this. So, qilu, 
have a midday nap, فإن الصياتين لا تقيل for the صياتين do not have a midday nap. So sort yourself out from the صياتين. Be different from the صياتين because what they do is not good. You should be doing what is good and what's wholesome and what's right. Now, I want you to, to, to remember this hadith and the midday nap, as the scholars indicated, could be a little bit before Dhuhr or after Dhuhr. So the midday nap is before Dhuhr, which is the forenoon, uh, or after Dhuhr, which is the early afternoon. The qaylula, the midday nap, is either in the forenoon or in the early afternoon. That is the qaylula that is mentioned in uh, this hadith of the Prophet ﷺ. Now, why would the Prophet be advising us to have a midday nap? You know, so the Prophet is not telling us, keep in mind, the Prophet is the one who came to teach us to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet is the one who came to invite us to the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he tells us sleep. You know, he tells us have a midday nap. So the Prophet has not come to us just overburden us with, you know, obligations, injunctions. You know, you should keep on praying, keep on this. Do you remember the hadith of moderation that we were talking about before? The, the very beautiful hadith of moderation. And adhere to moderation, adhere to moderation, that you may prosper or that you may reach your target or attain your objective. That is adhere to moderation, adhere to moderation. And, and, and the hadith said, لَن يُنْجِيَ أَحَدًا مِنْكُمْ عَمَلُهُ No one will be saved by his actions. They said, even you, O Messenger of Allah, he said, even me, except if Allah, or even I, except if Allah bestows uh, mercy on me. He said, سَدِّدُوا Act properly, وَقَارِبُوا Come close to your target. وَغْدُوا And worship Allah in the forenoon. وَرُوحُوا and in the afternoon, وَشَيْءٌ مِنَ الدُّلْجَ And some at night, وَالْقَصْدَ الْقَصْدَ تَبْلُغُ Adhere to moderation, adhere to moderation, that you may attain your objective, that you may reach your target. So the Prophet ﷺ who came to ask us to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he came to invite us to the worship of Allah, is telling us to sleep because he, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not benefit from our worship. Keep in mind that this worship is good for us. So, if you, you know, overdo it, if you over-worship and you exhaust your body and you exhaust your spirit, that is not what Allah is asking of you. Allah wants what's good for you. Allah wants your well-being, your spiritual, your emotional, your psychological, your mental, and your physical well-being as well. So the Prophet ﷺ tells us to sleep during the midday. I want you now to look at the screen, because if you look at the screen, you will find and National Institute of Health. This is the highest authority of health research in the United States of America. This is a governmental authority in America and the highest National Institute of Health. You know, the, the grantees that get grants from the NIH, that is actually the best thing that can happen to you as a professor of medicine or prof you know, professor in any medical field, to get an NIH grant. It's the biggest thing that can happen to you. National Institute of Health, to give you a grant to study a particular issue, that, you know, it doesn't get any better for any researcher or any uh, professor uh, of, of medicine. So the National Institute of Health had this news release about something very important. If you look at the screen, you will read there that power nap prevents burnout. And they say that new experiments by the National Institute of Mental Health, which is part of the National Institute of Health, uh, uh, new experiments by National Institute of Mental Health grantee, uh, Dr. Alan Hobson, and you know others, uh, colleagues at Harvard University, show a midday snooze reverses information overload, and a 20% overnight improvement in learning uh, a motor skill is large, largely traceable to a late stage of sleep. Some early risers might be missing. If you go down, you will see here that they are saying previous studies by the group traced overnight memory consolidation to amounts of slow wave sleep in first quarter of the night and to REM sleep 
in the last quarter of the night. At the end, ye, they will say that performance was directly proportional to the amount of stage two uh, non-rapid eye movement uh, NREM, non-rapid eye movement sleep they got in the fourth quarter of the night. So they're talking, they're praising the fourth quarter, they're praising the first quarter, and they're praising the midday snooze, the midday nap. In fact, in fact, if you go and Google this, you will not only find this, you know, uh, on the NIH site, the, the, this is common knowledge now, brothers and sisters, the midday nap actually has become, the benefits of the midday nap has become common knowledge to the point that many companies in Japan, in France, in Scandinavia, they actually have quiet rooms for their employees to have that snooze, that midday nap, you know, on company premise to have this midday nap because they recognize that having this midday nap will actually uh, revitalize that energy, uh, you know, and will enable the employees to better perform in the latter part uh, of their, their, their work day. NASA, you know, uh, NASA actually recommended for their astronauts as well as for their land employees to have this uh, midday nap. So that's become common knowledge. The Prophet ﷺ had told us of this, you know, appreciate this now. You know, you, you know really take, yourself, take a little bit of time to ponder over this, to contemplate and to appreciate the advice of the Prophet ﷺ in every regard. We've talked about advice that he gave us with, you know, with regard to sleep, with regard to eating, with regard to beautification, with regard to you know, the various acts of worship, madmada, rinsing your mouth, siwak, brushing your teeth. We, we've talked about so many uh, aspects of this guidance that is directly, directly uh, uh, responsible for or the directly contributing to the preservation and the promotion of human health in every regard. And that's not only the spiritual or the emotional or the mental or the psychological, but that is, as you're seeing in all of those studies, your physical health as well. Midday nap. And not only that, but the first quarter of the night is very important, they said. And not only that, the last quarter of the night is very important. So when the Prophet ﷺ says he slept half of the night, woke up to pray for one-third of the night, and then went back to sleep for one-sixth of the night, you want to appreciate the beauty of this hadith? Don't only appreciate the beauty of the math. By the way, the Prophet ﷺ did not learn how to read and write. The Prophet ﷺ did not go to school. One-half, one-third, and one-sixth may be easy for you to figure out that this is one full night. But the Prophet ﷺ did not go to school to... to, to uh, to, to, to figure this out. But someone can say that, you know, people learn this during their time to sell and to buy. That's also possible. But, you know, don't appreciate only the beauty of the math, but also, and more important, importantly, appreciate the beauty of the advice in light of what we have uh, said and what humans have discovered. Whether or not they discovered it, we would have believed in what the Prophet ﷺ said because he's most truthful and he conveyed the most truthful and final divine communication to mankind. Next time, we'll talk more about the beauty of this communication. And next time, we will talk about medicine. Really, that, you know, this time it's final. Next time, inshallah, we will be talking about medicine. Until I see you then, enjoy the blessings and favors of Allah on you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Prophet Muhammad brought the light. Prophet Muhammad enlightened the sight. Prophet Muhammad brought the light. Prophet Muhammad enlightened the sight. May peace be upon him. May peace be upon him. Prophet Muhammad removed the dust. Removed the dust of unbelief. Prophet Muhammad brought us. Brought us a good relief. May peace be upon him. May peace be upon